Great. Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in crypto, bring them down a bite sized piece. So, today, just as the thumbnail and title suggests, there's going to be a Celsius interview update. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on. And um, I got to tell you, I think this is a move in the right direction. So, before we get into that, we'll talk about the markets, correlation, uh, talk about uh, market value versus realized value. And uh, I want to talk to you about sticking to the plan. That's kind of important. Then we'll get into the Celsius recovery plan interview. And I got to tell you, uh, if, we, if we dive into the story behind the stories, uh, somebody's picking winners. Then we'll talk about the Celsius short squeeze. We'll talk about FTX and BlockFi. And then we're going to talk about Cardano being delayed just a little bit, like five weeks or so. And in all honesty, that's not too bad. Five weeks, I can live with that. I'm still waiting for ETH 2.0 to, to take off. And at the very end, we'll do Q&A, so hold all your questions at the very end. So first of all, let's take a look at what's going on into the market. Today's a good day. I mean, in all honesty, uh, today we can say, hey, uh, this is the whole point of holding on a little bit, uh, and uh, things are up. Why are they up? Because they are up. <laughs> You can, you can just, uh, today is the day of, of, uh, of the TA sh uh, traders and they'll tell you exactly why it's up and they called it the whole time and it was definitely going to happen. So congratulations for everybody. I sometimes just think it's like a dead cat bounce and there's no rhyme or reason. I will tell you this though, uh, it's pretty damn correlated. If you take a look at the NASDAQ, take a look at S&P 500, I mean, they're, they're all up. And uh, it just seems like crypto just follows suit, like, sure, let's just go up. But I mean, it's quite a bit of a rebound. And we really should be talking about the most important thing, which is that those thing underneath me called rules. And we talked about this in great detail, but the very last one is called take profits. So if you are one of those people who are in profit and you need some type of fundage or uh, something to take out because you can't afford mortgage insurance or whatever else. Maybe it's a time to think about taking those profits if that is what it is today. Now, if you're underwater, it's up to you. I can't tell you what to do, not financial advice, all that good stuff. So that's what's going on in the markets. And then also, I will tell you uh, as far as like on-chain analysis real quick, the, uh, this, was, this, this is the whole thing about charts. It is charts and TA are really whatever you want to make it. And uh, this is the uh, market value versus realized value. And if I blow this up, anything below 1.0 is considered a bottom. And we don't see that too often, but we saw this on uh, 12th of June, 13th of June, 14th of June, 15th of June, 16th, 17th of June. And this is when Bitcoin was going, I mean, at one point it was 17,600. And then when it blew, went below one, it was at 22,000. So, and again, it's still uh, bottoming. So all these different charts, they're good to look at. They're good. It's nice to know, uh, but don't put all your stock into one major thing. And I can just tell you, like, uh, when I take a look at these, especially over here, let me blow this up for a bit. Like, if you take a look at, like, for all, that's just a year to date. I mean, it's been above the the market value versus realized value for quite some time. And just recently has it gone underneath. And uh, I had been holding off on some dollar cost averaging like I usually do, but I'm still dollar cost averaging. And then uh, this, uh, what, June 18th, three days ago, when we were hit 17,600, this is when I you know, brought this up. And I said to myself, self, it's probably time to continue to dollar cost average. And I hit it at 17,600. Does that make me some genius? No, it just means that I stuck to my plan because I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I can tell you right now uh, that uh, the market usually is pretty volatile. So don't expect us to go to 40,000 uh, in 24 hours. I expect supreme volatility. And that's why I just talk about being safe, doing the basic stuff, which is boring, but it does work out in the long run. So let me just think about it in the comment section. Let's get to today's, the story, the Celsius recovery or the interview itself. So. We covered this a couple of days ago. Uh, Simon Dixon, if you don't know him, he's from Bank to the Future. Uh, he's a crypto OG. He was starting investing in 2010 in Bitcoin, if you can believe that. And he's done some pretty big investments along the way. Coinbase and Kraken and Bitfinex and all those places. And uh, his company was responsible uh, for helping out with the Bitfinex uh, after they got hacked. And he's also one of those people who is involved in Celsius. 
And he put this Celsius recovery plan out. We had covered this a couple of days ago. And uh, there wasn't too much information because uh, Simon was going through some, some problems personally. Uh, his father had passed away. And I just reached out to him. I go, hey, man, I, don't, I know things are rough right now, but there's a lot of people who, who could use a little bit of information about what's going on. And he said, okay. He goes, I'll, I'll come on the show. And he even said here, he goes, he goes, look, I've got a lot of requests and, uh, you know, who should I go on? And thankfully some of you guys picked me. And when I reached out to him, he said, sure, let's do it. So next week, I don't know if it's going to be Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, but we're going to have Simon on. And it's not just, it's not just about this, this Celsius recovery plan, which I think is going to be very huge to talk about exactly what they're going to do and how they're going to bring these, these things back. But what I see is some other issues behind the scenes. And this was a tweet from uh, Sam Bakeman fried I have no problems with Sam. Seems like a decent guy, done pretty well for himself over there at FTX. And he says, hey, today we're injecting $250 million into BlockFi and partnering with them so they can navigate the market from a position of strength. That sounds pretty good. I mean, $250 million, not too bad. And then uh, Simon says... FTX is the equivalent of JP Morgan before the Federal Reserve prevents bank runs. If you want Celsius Network to find another industry bottom-up solution, Bank of the Future can make that happen. We can solve industry problems with the community. Retweet if you agree. So this is just one of the parts. I found it interesting because if you, if you had followed, we did a video a couple of days ago, which we talked about, actually it was even longer than that. I think it was on uh, last Tuesday. And this was from Plan C. And we had talked about what exactly happened to the collapse of Celsius and Plan C kind of laid it out uh, about what had happened just by putting down, putting together <clears throat> pieces of on-chain data and uh, tweets. And it looked like there's some people who are picking winners. And one of the things that he talks about here is uh, respected crypto group puts up $20 million bounty, any whistleblower with definitive proof of planned Celsius attack. Now, I don't know if this is just smoke and mirrors, but Celsius reached out to me personally and asked me the same question. I was like, I haven't had anybody reach me. And then the people that I talk in my circle have no idea what you're talking about. However, I just thought it was interesting to bring this up that if uh, anybody has any information as to the ability of someone reached out to them and paid you to spread FUD, uh, you can make $20 million and it's anonymous. So just find uh, plan C. And then just so you know, uh, plan C, the thing that, uh, as far as like him putting together information, let's see if I can show this thread. Uh, this is like, this is a, a long parter, but really what it comes down to is this, is uh, this gentleman from Al Alameda. Alameda has been selling UST, doesn't have any particular plans. Jump Celsius and Jane Street committed already. Alameda has not. And this was what, what's going on here is that uh, behind the scenes, when UST became depegged, there was a, a group of people. Whoops, 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 not too much here. A group of people that were supposed to get together and help kind of bail out Terra, Jump, Jane Street, Alameda, and some other places. And uh, Celsius said, Nope, <laughs> we're not, we're not going to help you bail out Terra or USD because that is a sinking ship and we want to protect our community. Unfortunately, uh, there were some people holding the bags, and it sounds like uh, they weren't too happy. Alameda, Galaxy Diddle, Digital, Jump. Uh, and then I'm going to have you read this. And then there's other players in the game that maybe or may not. This is all speculation, so don't sue me. This is just uh, what uh, someone else had put out. I just found it very interesting about what's going on. And then you've, you've got some people saying, well, we'll, we'll put money into BlockFi. Uh, we'll put money into someplace else. And uh, for some reason, uh, it's not really going the other way. But maybe it's just uh, because, let's be honest, Celsius was a little bit reckless uh, with where they put their money. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say they were the golden child. They did some pretty degenerate de degen plays and uh, you know that will come out to light. But uh, it's just, there's a lot of things going on in uh, short order. So we'll have Simon on here to clear it all up. I'd love to talk to him. So let me tell me what you think about that in the comment section. Again, probably Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week, and we'll go from there. But that leads me to my next point, the short squeeze. And I want to bring this to everybody's attention because there's a short squeeze going on. And it's just like uh, the GameStop situation that they had years ago. And you can see right here, 
in the last seven days or so, the price of Celsius token has gone from around 50 cents or so all the way up to $1.55. So what's going on here is Celsius network is wants everybody to, this is what they're saying to do. The big sell short squeeze explained. Buy sell on FTX, move tokens to MetaMax, connect to one inch and set sell mode at hundred bucks and then retweet. That's what they want people to do. And this is essentially what's going on. Uh, this is organized by a group of people and they're saying this is what's happening. Uh, this is on, uh, uh, this is two of 13. At $3.50, the sell price on May 29th, there were 1 million sell shorts at spot. The spot API started to increase. The future API was already negative. On June 11th, the spot shorts were 7 million sell at 40 cents. On June 14th, spot shorts were 17 million before the first short squeeze. Sell price was 30 cents. It was already 9 million naked shorts. So below 40 cents shorts mounted up from 7 million. Ugh, it just goes on and on. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's, it bores me. But this is what they're doing. And this is the whole thing with the sell short squeeze. And it looks like it's working, but it looks like it's losing a little bit of steam. So if uh, that is for you to decide if you want to do anything like that, this will not help uh, people who have their funds on the Celsius network. This will not help the Celsius token holders that have it locked up on the Celsius network right now. What this is for essentially is to punish those people who are shorting Celsius network and whoever those people may be. I'm not saying to do it. I'm just bringing it to your attention and say that me personally, uh, I don't short. I don't do those, those crazy trade things because I have a plan and I'll stick to my plan. Even though it is quite tempting to stick it to somebody that potentially may or may not be a, a part of this uh, gaff or these things that are going on, uh, that's just what's happening. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And let's finish up with uh, the FTX story, which we pretty much covered already. So this is from BlockFi. Uh, or from Coindesk, BlockFi receives 250 million credit facility from FTX. The proceeds will be used to fulfill client balances across all accounts. And of course, this was the uh, tweet from Zach Prince. Today, BlockFi signed a short a term sheet with FTX official to secure a 250 million revolving credit facility, providing us with access to capital that further bolsters our balance sheet and platform strength. Also, uh, there was a name you might've heard, Alameda Research. Uh, Alameda also uh, is uh, helping out uh, Voyager and uh, giving them uh, a spread to, I think it's like $200 million as like a forward. So looks like there's some people out there, you know, saying, hey, we want, uh, we want to go with this organization because of X, Y, and Z reason. And I'm not going to say it's nefarious. I'm just saying that's what it is. Prince said the move bolsters. Uh, this is not the first time FTX CEO Sam Bakeman Free to stepped in to bail out a major crypto company. Last week, crypto broker Voyager secured a revolving line of credit with Bankman Free founded Quant Alameda Research. <laughs> FTX is reportedly one of the firms that liquidated Celsius. Allegedly, allegedly. And that's what's going on. And then lastly, uh, Cardano uh, delay the Vassal upgrade. So I don't know if Coindesk has a thing against uh, Cardano, but they always, every time I, I read an article about Cardano, it doesn't seem very positive, even though like this to me personally is actually the right thing to do. Uh, the IOG engineering team is extremely close to finalizing the core work with just seven bugs still outstanding to complete the hard fork with none currently ranked as severe, developers said. After some consideration, we have agreed not to send the hard fork update proposal to the test net to allow more time for testing. Developers said that few outstanding items were needed to confirm everything was working as expected and they would need a few more days to do that. Look, with all the different problems that's going on and, and hacks and rug pulls and things like that, thank you Cardano for not pushing things uh, forward because I'd like to keep my Cardano uh, exactly where it is in my stake pool. So uh, that's what's going on. And again, I will say, I mean, it was supposed to happen uh, the end of June for this uh, hard fork, which really, from what I understand from, from the interview from Charles Hoskinson, it's more so for the developers to help them with the Plutus language for pipelining, transactions per second, and uh, throughput. 
and also for concurrency to help everything run a little bit smoother. So mostly it's for the dApps that are being uh, built on. And before anybody says, well, it's a ghost chain, there's no dApps. There's like, I want to say over 500 different dApps being developed. I think it's even more than that. So uh, before you spout off, uh, please have some facts because this is the information that I get. So anyhow, that's what's going on. Why don't you think about that in the comments? And now, that oh, was pretty good, 15 minutes. People are wanting some shorter videos. Well, there you go. So let me know what you think. And if you got a takeoff, uh, that concludes all the news. Uh, if you want to stick around for the q and I'll answer all your burning questions right now. And uh, we'll go from there.